Hey there, Stampin' Friends. Welcome to Movie Monday with Jody Breckbill, Stampin' Queen. Today's card is this gorgeous lighthouse card using High Tide Stamp Set. This card actually came through my Facebook feed and it was from Stampin' with Tammy, uh, Tammy White. And this is direct copy of her card because when I saw it, I was just like, this is awesome, we're gonna make it. So uh, let me show you how to do this card. This is the High Tide Stamp Set. This is one that I've had for a long time. It was one of the first ones I had to buy from the Occasions Catalog, and sadly, I have hardly used it at all. So we're gonna quit that right now. Um, the other thing that we're going to use is our Serene Scenery Designer Series Paper Stack. This is in the annual catalog in the big book. I don't know if you have seen it. If you've been in my stamp classes, you have worked with it. It is awesome. It's the paper stack that has the real life pictures on one side and then designer paper on the other. Uh, it's just really, really pretty and makes some great cards without much work to them. There's not a whole lot that you wanna do. Um, is just stamp on it and use it as a gorgeous background paper. So we're gonna use a piece of, I guess like the distressed barn wood. And um, <clears throat> I will make sure I have the dimensions on the blog here um, when or on my, um, on my video for you guys. So um, we're gonna take the shadow stamp. There's two stamps in the high tide. Um, <clears throat> one is like a shadow of the side of the lighthouse and the other is like the guts of the lighthouse. That's the inside of them. You can tell I've already used them and you will have staining on photopolymer. That was something we talked about this weekend at one of my events. Um, the see-through stamp sets are called photopolymer. They're awesome because we can totally see through which makes lining them up so easy. But archival black will stain red will stain. Um, these are totally clean, they just are stained and that's something that we just deal with with having photopolymer. Your regular red rubber stains just the same but you don't see that as much because it is a colored rubber. Um, there, it's not see-through so you can't see the staining. So we're going to take some basic black and I'm going to ink up just the shadow stamp. sure I have some good ink on that and I'm just going to stamp that kind of off to the left a little bit uh, so that I have room to put my sentiment on there. Now you will see on this stamp, oh I have sticky on there, <clears throat> um, there's some areas that look like it did not get inked. That is the way it's supposed to be. It's a distressed stamp so it's to look like there's some sh natural shading not um, not a complete solid image. So while I have the black out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment also. And the stamp just is so perfect with the lighthouse. We're gonna come in now and use the center of the um, lighthouse and I want to have two colors on this lighthouse. So we're going to have red from here down and then that little top, that little lighthouse top is going to be soft suede. So I'm going to ink this up with real red and I just kind of want to watch where I'm inking to make sure I don't ink my whole stamp. Then I just get, I leave that little top so that we can do that in brown. And so by angling that, I can see the edge of my ink pad and make sure that I'm just catching just that area to ink. And <clears throat> photopolymer makes it so awesome. We're just gonna look through there and line that up. And there we go. So by itself, it's beautiful. Just, um, I, I just really, really enjoy this stamp. So little bit of always artichoke and this piece is like sand or grass or a little hill that the lighthouse is on and you can see that there's actually a cutout here where the bottom of the stamp or the bottom of the lighthouse is going to fit perfectly. So just for a little bit of shading we're going to stamp this off just so it's not quite as dark and then stamp it just a little bit lighter so that then we can come in with some of our grasses 
Where are my graphs? Okay. <clears throat> and now without stamping off, I'm going to add some of the darker grasses on here. And you can kind of cover the lighthouse so he doesn't look like he's just kind of sitting on top of the grass. Okay, I don't know why my nose always decides to run whenever I am doing these videos. It's crazy. And actually, I'm stamping quickly because you can see over here, I'm chasing the sun. Yes, we have sun in Pennsylvania today. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So um, I'm trying to hurry to get this video done before I get too much sun. So um, a little bit, tiny little bit of basic black just for a couple dark grasses so that it kind of has even a little bit more more depth. I really liked um, Tammy added that and I thought that was a really cool touch. So now, well, I don't know what is sticking on the back of my paper. Okay, so now we could just go with this and that's beautiful, but we're going to come in <clears throat> and add a little bit of white. So I, I don't know if you can tell the difference here between these two. Uh, one definitely has some, some significant white and the other is just kind of showing through the paper. And so the way to achieve that is by using the Craft Ink Reinker. Just put a little bit of a, a little tiny bit, little drop inside. This is a lid of a brad container, I think. And um, blender pen. That's it. Now, one thing I want to suggest to you, <clears throat> this takes drying time. This is a pigment ink, so it stays wet for longer. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it's one that you don't want to color like you normally color where you would move your pen back and forth because you don't want to bleed the red ink into your white ink. So I kind of do like, I don't know, a little tapping, pouncing kind of thing and uh, just kind of add that white in there. Now, if you're not near ink, you could do a little bit more of a coloring technique, but when I get close to the ink, I just kind of start tapping. And then um, there's some little highlighty areas, like I talked about, that this looks like you missed some ink, or you, yeah, you missed some ink getting on there. And that is how the stamp is made. That's normal. It's supposed to be that way. That's so that there's just some natural shading and texture on that, on that stamp. So we're going to Keep tapping in and just filling in the white ink anywhere that there looks like there's some shading and that just kind of really makes it pop. I don't want to color over my, um, what do they call them? My grasses. I still want them to look like they're um, at the bottom of the lighthouse. Now, the only thing you have to keep in mind this does take a little bit of drying time. So you might want to do this, let it dry before you put your whole card together. And you can just kind of, wherever you want to just put some shading up at the top, just has, it just makes it just really pop. And it might not be showing quite on the video, but when you do it in real life, you'll really be amazed. So anywhere that there looks like there's some missing ink, I kind of colored that in. You can always go back once it dries. It it will dry probably a little bit darker into your card, uh, cardstock or your your paper, <clears throat> and you can always go back and add more white to it. And again, let it dry. If you're strapped for time, just zap it with your zap it with your heat tool would probably work. So I don't know that I'm going to fully finish this card for you guys today. Um because of it being wet, but I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So now, once you have that white tip on there, you're just gonna kind of clean that off. It will stain your blender pen. That is sadly, but truly. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now the second step would be to take some, <clears throat> um, well, let's attach it to our card base here. Scoot this out of the way. So I have a piece of early espresso and I'm able to do that if I just stay away from the edges. <clears throat> okay, so very carefully I'm going to attach 
that piece. Then I would put some adhesive back here and add a little bit of our twine. Like I said, I don't want to do this just yet because it is still drying. Add a little bit of twine to that. And then finally, pop dots, dimensionals on the back of here to go on my white card base. So this is what you would have at the end. Now I added the little bow. I kind of like that. Um, Tammy didn't have a bow on hers, but you can see that there's some dimension to that card. Um, so seriously, that's how simple that is and just such a gorgeous... Uh, wow card. I, I just I was floored when I saw it and I'm like I have to copy that like exactly So thank you, Tammy. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for dropping by Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week for movie Monday